Hello everyone and welcome to your Glass Nerd video report where today we're looking at an interesting topic which is how we identify bullish and bearish market structure through the lens of on-chain activity. So why are we looking at on-chain activity specifically and what do I mean by that? Well on-chain activity to me is the number of transactions, the number of active addresses and the amount of volume that's moving through the system. What we're trying to assess is is the user base growing, declining and are we seeing more utilization of Bitcoin as a settlement layer? So what we can really look for is our changes in this market structure. Are we in a bullish market structure, which if we think about what's going on during a bull, the media is exciting, the news is exciting, and everybody knows a friend who's got rich from Bitcoin. So what we see is a growth in the number of people and the overall interest of people coming into the network. That also means there's more transactions on the move. It means more value is moving through the system. And we're seeing this redistribution and a reshuffling of who owns coins and when. Now the exact opposite is in play during a bear market. When things start to get a little bit grim, people tend to walk away, they're less interested in the asset, and we see the overall on-chain activity really decline. So what we can do is we can look at these different behaviors, we can see them as they emerge from the overall ledger activity, and we can look for what could be signs of a market top, a market bottom, when are we at the period of maximum interest, which is normally towards the end of bull cycles, and when is there the minimum amount of interest and only the hodlers remain, which at the end of a bear market means who is going to be selling. So let's jump into the charts and we'll explore a number of these different concepts through the lens of on-chain activity. But just before we do, please give us a like and a subscribe if you're enjoying this type of content. If you want to see more of these on-chain 101 nuts and bolts types videos, please let us know what your favorite metrics are in the comments and we'll get around to them in future content. So here we are in Glassnode Studio, and we're looking at a fairly simple metric, which is the number of active addresses. And I've got a 14 day moving average applied here just to smooth out some of the daily noise if we can see the big picture trend. Now, when I look at this chart, I see three different styles of market character. I see the bull market where we see growing activity and more and more people coming in, more people buying, more people selling, and just general network is thriving during these bullish periods. You can also see that at the exact top, it's typically the point where the maximum number of people are coming in. It's the most exciting, it's in the most news. And for a bit of a fun fact, I was one of these folks who bought the very top and wrote it all the way down. You can see the same bullish market structure here in 2020 and 2021. We have growing activity as the market starts to push higher. Now, the second form of market structure is more bearish. You can see that after that peak, most of those new buyers, those new investors, the interest really wanes as price declines. People get flushed out and when people lose money, they tend to leave and don't come back for some time. So you can see this almost bear market period and you can actually see it form somewhat of a bear market channel. So it's almost like this activity level kind of reaches equilibrium. And when you think about this, and particularly the decline in 2017 and the decline during the May sell-off, it speaks to all of those folks who just came for the hype and the gains have been flushed out of the market. So who remains? Well, only the hodlers and people who really care about the asset and are don't relatively price insensitive and still think that Bitcoin is going to be worth more in the future are sticking around. So this really speaks to this kind of hodler mentality in these folks, the buyers of last resort. Now, the third phase is kind of this miniature phase, particularly that we had here in 2019. We had the capitulation after the 2018 bear market in November, and you can see here that the period of on-chain activity, the amount of active addresses typically is at the lowest at the absolute bottom. We had this miniature burst of activity, and you can actually see that the active addresses started climbing before we had broken out in April, around April Fool's Day actually, where we had this rally up to 4,000, 5,000, and then we pulled all the way up to 14,000. So you can actually see that there was on-chain activity starting to grow and climb even before price had responded to it, showing this activity and this growth in new users. Now note also that the 2019 following that peak was another nine month long bear market culminated in the March 2020 capitulation event. And note how the level of activity that we saw was higher than during the bear in 2018. It shows that there's been a renewed level of attention. People have found this more interesting. There's more people in the market, and that potentially means that there's more demand side. And what that resulted in was the subsequent bull market as we pulled into 2021. You can see this growth in overall activity that followed each of these peaks higher.
And note also that during the May 2021 sell-off, that was the absolute peak in terms of this cycle's overall on-chain activity. The maximum number of people panicked, sold their coins into that, uh, that particular capitulation event, and then we headed into a period of more bearish price action. Now we can see this in another metric, which is the number of transactions, which again is a fairly simple and high level type metric. But what we're seeing here is this growth in overall users during the 2016 and 17 bear market, which peaks just the same as active addresses at the exact top. We then get a flush out of all of those folks who came just for the excitement, the hype and the overall gains. Now note that this bottom occurred in April. So with our active addresses, this trended sideways for a period of time. But note that we actually have rising transaction activity through most of 2018, and it grew even more through 2019, and very similar, did not return back down to this bear market low. So this is starting to say that during this first half of the bear, as we get into April and May, this is where the maximum amount of pain has, has occurred, and most of the folks who came just for the excitement have left the building. So this rising transaction activity, particularly as price falls even further, starts to speak to that hodler class. These are people who are willing to stick around with Bitcoin, rain, hail or shine, and really are here through all weather conditions. So this is where we see this almost divergence, more activity even as price is falling, it starts to speak to a potential reversal. We have this 2019 phase and 2020 where we don't return back down to this bear market low, again, signaling there's more attention even though price is trading sideways. You can see the significant collapse in overall transaction activity after the May sell-off. And really, we're only just starting to recover. So we're certainly not out of the woods yet, but it's speaking a little bit like this later stage of 2018. So it's looking at these hodlers who remain. We've seen the flushing out by and large of the people who came just for price. They were seeing it in the news and in the media. They have essentially moved out of the market and it's only those hodlers that really remain in place. So the next chart we're looking at is, again, it's looking at this on-chain activity, but from a user perspective. So I mentioned earlier that an entity, or what we define as an entity at Glassnode, is the one owner of multiple addresses. So when we talk about that entity's net growth, so if you have somebody who's coming onto the chain, so somebody who's just entering the network, getting their first UTXOs, they would be classified as a new entity. They're a new user who's come into the network. Conversely, some people will spend their entire balance and leave the network. So what the net entity's growth is looking at is how many folks came in and take away how many folks left and what do we end up with? So positive values of this metric is showing a growth. We're seeing this acceleration in the number of people who are coming and sticking around each day. And you can see that Bitcoin has gone through these multiple phases. During 2012 and 13, it was fairly light. We had 300, 400 different users coming in per day. If we move into the 2015 and 16 period, we're talking about almost 10 times that. We're talking about 3,000 and 4,000 new users per day. You can see that the bull market really explodes in the number of people who are coming into the market. And as with many of these metrics, they peak exactly on the top. When the media is at its absolute zenith, the most number of people know somebody who got rich from Bitcoin. And again, this was me riding it all the way down. I was one of these people in this spike. But note how with each cycle, we get more people who are coming into the network. Back here in 2018, even at the bottom of the bear market, we had 7,000 new entities overall growing in the network. We had a burst of activity in 2019 as we had that rally. We then again established this higher floor. 2021 shows up and we get the topping pattern again. People coming into the network typically peaks at or around the top. But you can see that we're still growing. So there are more net entities coming into Bitcoin than leaving. Even as prices are declining, it's starting to show that growth. And you can almost think about this as part of the adoption curve. More and more people are coming in and fewer people are leaving on net. So that's really what this metric is showing. It's this difference between people coming in and people who are leaving. So just before we move on and look at our final metric, um, do let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this style of deep dive. We're looking to try and make more of this content that really helps you understand different market structures and how Bitcoin functions, and really to try and understand more about these tools. So do let me know if you're enjoying this and also what your favorite metrics are so I can essentially explore these over the coming videos. 
So what we're looking at here is the median transfer volume. So the way to think about a median, if you look at all of the coins that are moving around in a particular day, what is a typical value? What is in the middle? So there's gonna be some transactions which are smaller. Typically we see lots of smaller transactions and a handful of large transactions. So what we see here is very similar. Towards the actual peaks of these markets, we can see back here in 2011, we had a peak in the size of each transaction. This is a function of a few things. The first one is that as price rises, naturally each coin is gonna have more value and therefore the typical or the middle style of transaction is gonna be worth more. So back in 2011, we had about $300, $400 typical transactions. We can see we hit a very similar level at the 2013 peak, and these are coins that are being sold. They move back onto an exchange, and therefore we have to find a buyer. The market has to find demand to absorb those coins. During a bear market, as we saw in 2014 and 15, it's very, very quiet, much, much smaller transactions. The overall size is much, much less. And that's generally speaking to people who are trading back and forth and you know coins moving to and from exchanges. We can see as we move into 2017, particularly towards the back half. So really this metric is very good at picking when we get this transition from the early phase of the bull and the bear into the bull. You can see the growth in the typical size of these transactions as more of these large sizes come in. This is both large buyers, but also larger sellers. So we see a growth in the typical size of the transaction, which again, buyers have to come in and absorb that demand. And note that we actually had the peak, whereas our previous metrics in 2017 peaked at the top. What we see is a little bit after that. This is showing that capitulation. Once the top actually got put in, this is where folks actually started really liquidating and capitulating, realizing that maybe this bull market is actually over. You can then see the decline in this metric and it really pulls back to these lows during the bear. And you can see here in 2020, following the March 2020 capitulation event, this really speaks to a equilibrium phase through 2019. And the growth in the typical transaction size, again, indicative of a, of a bull market, really started following that March 2020, which is showing again that there's this momentum, more and more size is starting to come in, there's more transaction activity, and again, it speaks similar to the later stage of this bull. So it shows that it really does have momentum following that point. Now, where are we in the current market cycle? Well, similar to most of our on-chain uh, activity metrics, following the May sell-off, a significant decline. We've seen that peaking up and overall uh, typical size of transactions, and you can see it continues to drip down. So it's showing that we're kind of in this phase following a blow off top, following a cycle top, and we have to go through that period of reestablishing equilibrium. And what we're looking for is that regrowth. We're looking for that size of transaction to start climbing back up again, which shows that people are coming in and more value settlement is occurring. So thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Do let us know in the comments if you're enjoying it and what other types of metrics, what are your favorite metrics that you want me to explore um, or different concepts or just questions that you have and we can address them as we go. So until the next video, I'll see you then. Cheers.